What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out this video. Today, Emma and I are going to teach you about pre and post Vader sends. It's a subject that came up in a tip I was doing yesterday and I glazed over it since it wasn't the focus of that tip. So I thought I'd dig in a little deeper today. So I have a Pro Tools session open, just basic kick, snare and hats. Let's take a listen. So it sounds good, just dry. Let's go over to our mix window, Command plus. Now I'm gonna hit Shift Command N to make a new track. I'm gonna hit Command right and Command down. Make a stereo aux. I'm gonna call that verb one. I'm gonna throw a verb on here. Today is not about reverb settings. So I'm just gonna grab a verb I like and put one of my own presets on it. And I'm gonna move that over to the left by the master. So what we want to do, we want to send all these tracks to it, let's say. So I'm going to click on the nameplate of one, shift click over to the one on the opposite side to get them all, hold shift option for apply to selected, and let's send them to our verb one. So now still holding shift option, I'm going to click on FMP for follow main pan. So whatever panning we do here, you can see the little grayed out knob up there is following along that maintains our track panning in the reverb itself. So let's solo our snare and hit play. And when I hit play, I'm going to turn this verb send up and we won't hear it yet. We should be hearing tons of reverb, right? Why are we not? Well, because we didn't solo safe our return. So to solo save the return, you just want to command click on the S. And now let's turn this down to not hurt ourselves. And now if I hit play, we will hear the verb on our snare. So with the little P off as it is, this is a post fader send. And that means that the level of the send is linked to the level of the track. And for something like reverb or usually delay, that's what we want. So if we turn the track down, the level of the reverb will come down proportionally with it. So for mixing, that makes sense most of the time because as you're turning up and down the levels of your tracks, you want the reverb to stay proportional with it. You don't want to have to turn your track down and then go, oh, I better go turn down the reverb as well. That'd be an annoying extra pain in the butt. But conversely, just to show you, if you did turn on the little P and make this a pre-fader send, if I pull down the level of this track, the level of the reverb will actually stay the same. And when the track here gets all the way to the bottom, you'll be hearing just 100% wet or 100% reverb. So if that's what you're going for, cool, great, no problem. You just wanna know why you're doing what you're doing. So let's option click this fader to bring it back up to Unity. Let's turn this back to a post fader send, unsolo this and I'll just work every one of my drums into the reverb a little bit. So then I thought I would quickly review the pre-fader send business that we did for parallel compression because that's sort of the opposite. So we'll make another stereo return, shift command N, command right for stereo, command down for aux. I'll call this drum pair. And I'm going to high pass it because I always do on my drum parallel because I don't want extra bass down there muddying things up. Around 120 is, is kind of my starting place, but change it based on the track and the key and your taste and the song and the whole deal. That's just a good starting place. Then I'm going to throw some compression after that. And today's not about the compression settings themselves, although I will say I would never pull the threshold down this far if I were doing just plain old series compression. It's just parallel because, again, in parallel, we're combining 
uncompressed with very compressed, generally speaking. So now we have that set up, but we have nothing sent to it yet. So I'm gonna click on the name plate of the hats, shift click over to the kick, hold shift option for apply to selected, and then let's send them over to the drum pair track. Now, still holding shift option, I'm gonna click FMP again, but now this time I'm also gonna click on pre-fader send. So, now with my drum parallel, I'm going to bring that up the middle bit a little bit in terms of pan, just because I like it that way. So I'm gonna click this little fader to bring up the bigger one. Then I'm gonna click link and invert, and bring this up to about 50-50. I'm gonna solo this so we're only hearing what's coming out of the return. So we're just hearing the very compressed signal. And because it's on a pre-fader send, I can hear these things when I bring them in, whereas if they're on a post-fader send, at least if it's working correctly, I can't because post fader sends means this is after this fader and this fader is in effect muted. So if I have this on a pre fader send, I can hear these being sent into the return even though this track is in effect muted like that. So this gives us a couple abilities. It gives us the ability to have this level not linked to this level at all, which is the very definition of a pre-fader send, but it also gives us the ability to solo this and hear only the compressed part, which is what I'm doing now. So you never wanna to do too much while you're soloed because at the end of the day, it's irrelevant to the, to the mix, but I can at least get a general idea of what this sounds like. So that's just the compressed image that we're hearing again. So then my, rec my recommendation is generally to, as we saw yesterday, bring that down and then work it in. So you can hear that with that drum parallel compression image in there, as with yesterday, much bigger. Last little tip, if you want, you can also send your drum parallel into the verb as well. And I can just option drag this verb send over to do that. There you go, that's the tip. Hope you dig it. Thanks a lot.